I developed what I call a vocabulary or even a language for constructing images for this body of work. And it happened over a lengthy period of time and I'm still refining it. But one thing I do is I photograph things at different angles. So if I photograph something, I'll photograph the top of it, from below it, to the right, to the left, almost like a filmmaker, dozens and dozens of images. Then I take it back to my studio and I piece it together with Photoshop on the computer to form an image that either goes into the picture plane or comes out. And what I found is that it gives a lot more closeness and intimacy to the subject matter and people can be more engaged if they feel closer. The camera gives such a flat image, people don't realize it, so we're so used to seeing a photograph, but there's almost a piece of glass between the, the person and the object that's being photographed. Whereas the way I piece it together, it really pulls you in and the subject matter comes out. And that closeness forms an intimacy that you can't get if you feel like there's this invisible barrier. And what's important to me about a photograph is sharing that feeling or the energy of the place or the experience, not so much the way it looked. So this helps me do that in a certain way that, that I'm very um, happy with. The other thing that I do that um, I've been interested in for years and I finally figured out a way to integrate it into the work. And it seems that when women photograph, they photograph things up close, you know, within, they say, uh, their arm's length, like a yard of them. When men photograph, they photograph the large scene. Now, this isn't everybody, but maybe 70% if you just handed them a camera. So what I think is that when we were 2,000 years ago and hunters and gatherers, the men who were the best hunters and the best protectors had the best opportunity to share their genes into the gene pool. The same with the women. The women who were the best caretakers kept the home the best, collect the best berries and twigs, probably uh, procreated more than someone who wasn't good at that. So it sort of passed down thousands of years. And if you think about it yourself, whether you're male or female, Pay attention to what do you see first. Do you see the close-up intimate or do you see the big picture? And it might be a new thing you can kind of notice about yourself. So what I wanted to do was bring the two together. It was sort of a yin-yang bringing it together. So my photographs show the wide open environment, the context in which something is photographed. It also shows something intimate that you might want to put some attention on. It's very different to see just that close-up by itself or just the context. But when you have the two together, they build a story on each other and it complicates the story in ways that you can add more richness to it. So I use these two formulas a lot. Every photograph doesn't have them, but a lot of the photographs in this body of work has those different ways of working involved with them. When I go out to photograph, I never have something in my mind that I want to photograph. In fact, I try to keep my mind very, very empty. It's an extension of my spiritual practice. I get up in the morning, I meditate, and I go out while it's still dark. So that's just sort of the pattern in the practice. And I just start walking, and I don't have any particular thing I'm walking to. I'm walking towards a river, I'm walking in a new city, I'm walking somewhere, but it's not like, oh, I'm walking there to do this. And what I find if I stay very, very clear and very, very um, available, that things just happen in front of me. It's like the curtain is drawn and this amazing scene appears and I'm invited to come in. I really feel like if I don't get out in the morning, every morning, not three mornings a week, every morning with the camera, with the full intention of accepting whatever is given to me, it will be given to someone else. So that's how I make my images. I don't really make them, they're given to me and I'm always very grateful in the moment of, of receiving them. I'm really not a street photographer. 
I really want the person to give me permission to photograph them. Uh, so if I meet someone, I might sit and hang out with them for a while before I ask them, is it all right if I photograph? The other thing I'll do is I'll point to my camera and point to them and they can say yes or no. And a perfect example of this is a, a friend of mine took me into a village one day. Now, if an Indian takes you to a village, it's a very high compliment because the village is where they came from. They considered it, consider it sacred and that's where they go to die a lot of times. And he was taking me to visit his father and his father was under a net a mosquito net and he was just sitting on this sort of porch and when I walked up to him I pointed at the camera and I said and he said oh yeah 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 so I started photographing him and if you notice this scene here which I got it immediately but I just felt like I had to be okay with him is the net was like a cocoon and he's like this figure like a, almost a caterpillar in there getting ready to go through his metamorphosis. He's waiting to die. He's going to go through that change. And all the symbolism was there. And it was like more beautiful than I could have ever set it up. But it just seems like if I hadn't gotten his permission, it would not have been, the, the same energy wouldn't have happened with it that did because I, I it was all right. So yes, I always like to, even if I don't know the people, I always get their, their eye contact and and make sure that it's okay.